That's okay. I was really stretching. I was worried about where we were going. No more than that. No more than that. Not a good thing. Uh, 
it is the he's the giver. He he's the he uses us as yielded vessels. He uses us in all of these gifts. Now these gifts, the gifts of healing, are listed with all these other gifts, and we need to understand that these gifts operate through people who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And he points out to us that he's, he gives us these gifts in multiplicity. It's not just a gift. As long as I've been around Pentecost, I've heard somebody come on and say, well, my gift is this, or my gift is that. And uh, the truth is, is that none of these gifts are ours. These gifts are God's gifts given and operated through us by and in the person of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we, we, we also, I try to teach, and I, I want to bring it up here, and, and remind us that when we come before God, seeking that, that experience, seeking that place before the Lord, uh, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And as we've learned through the years, we know one of the ways that those around us know that we've been baptized in the Holy Spirit is they will hear us speaking in an unknown tongue. And we've learned also that that unknown tongue is an integral part of, of our, our whole experience with God. But if you've been baptized by the Holy Spirit, that means that the Holy Spirit has found you to be a clean vessel. And He'll only dwell in a clean vessel. That means you're free from sin. Mm -hmm. uh, the, God, God will not reside in an unclean temple. He will not reside in... Uh, even in my mind, even going back to when Jesus walked this earth, but before the baptism, the Holy Spirit was poured out. He went in that temple, and he didn't like what he saw. He cleaned that temple out, and, and he, he 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 did it in a in a very a very great way. The point that I'm trying to get to is that once you have been blessed of God with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit resides in you. He resides in you, and. Remember, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. That means God is residing in you, in and through the personage of the Holy, the personage of the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit lives in you, the Holy Spirit resident there has all gifts available to Him to use in your life. So sometimes our teaching or our doctrine, or maybe even just some. You know, I've seen some people that they just so desire to be used in a certain gift, that's all they focus on. That's all they focus on. And, uh, and, and, and I certainly won't, wouldn't want to crit criticize anybody for focusing on a gift that meant the most to them. But I just want to remind those people that don't live in God. Don't live in God. Uh, as we have been going through this, looking at this scripture, uh, I, I, I have questioned my own faith, my own experience, as to why I haven't seen more people healed when I pray for them to be healed than I have. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you that I, I don't keep track of things like this as to say, I prayed for this many people at work. You know, I prayed for this many in the morning. I don't do things like that. Because in the past, probably two years, ever since COVID had invaded us, and we had to completely rethink how to do church, and I had to completely learn new ways to minister to people, uh, I have come to the understanding that sometimes the only way I can pray correctly in a situation is to pray the will of God to be performed in that person's life. Even though I'll ask God, say, God, my, my first petition is, is, is that you heal them. That you heal them of cancer. That you heal them of leprosy. That you heal whatever I'm praying for. But then I go on to, the, to, to, to complete now, and I learn. I always say, not my will, but thine be done. Don't let Bill Sanders get in the way of your divine
divine will, Heavenly Father. Now, I don't always have the I don't always have the same peace when I pray that way. And the devil tries to make us think that, okay, you prayed for somebody, they weren't healed, there's something wrong with you. That's what the devil tried to lie to me about. That the people you're praying for have to be in the spirit to accept that prayer and the healing. If they're not willing to lend themselves to the spirit for the healing, because I know a lot of people are just flat afraid of it. They're well, going to lose their pension. They're going to lose their social security. Uh, their disability. Uh, because if you if they're healed, they'll lose their income. Yeah, I I have come across some cases like that, and it's it. Satan will use anything he can yes. to bring fear into your life, mm -hmm. or to bring unanswerable questions before you. Yeah. You know, sometimes the simple question of why is unanswerable. Absolutely. It's just unanswerable. But Satan tries to confuse us. He tries to muddy the water. He tries to do all that he can to bring us to a place to where we are uh, in some way, some form or fashion hindered in our faith. And even, even though I have been doing this for now decades, I have to tell you that sometimes when I pray, Lord, thy will be done, I don't have that peace mm -hmm. that I want to, not listen to my wording, I want to feel. Mm -hmm. And so then Bill Sanders has to remind himself, and the Holy Spirit helps me, that I don't walk my feelings, I walk my faith. Hey, Joe yeah. didn't get any feelings out of I don't think he did. So, the, the fact that I put this in here, these gifts of healing, the main thing I wanted you to see here is the fact that when, it, when God talks to us about healing, excuse me, healing, the gifts is plural. It's not the gift singular, it's gifts of healings. So healing can come in so many different ways. Now here is how my research has brought this about. When we are healed through medicine, when we are healed through surgery, when we are healed through therapy, those are all different gifts of healing. Hold on to that. God created our bodies in many ways to heal themselves. Biggest problems would get in the way. Sometimes in that that was the explanation that the Holy Spirit gave to me when I I was seeking to find out, Father, why am I laying here in this hospital bed with quadruple bypass? I have always followed you my whole adult life, and then, you know, I've, I've, I've paid my time, I've preached the gospel, I've sacrificed, I've done everything I know to do to follow your will for my life. And then the Holy Spirit began to show me that the result of my heart surgery was simply me reaping what I had sowed with my diet, my lack of exercise, overindulgent, whatever it might be. And that that was, it wasn't necessarily God's will that I end up in this place, but I got in the way of the, the gift of healing. Uh, unknowingly now. It, it wasn't like the Holy Spirit was telling me, do this, do that. I, the truth of the matter is, I, 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 was, I was in this situation with my heart before I even asked God about things like this. I just, I was hungry, I ate. If there was a whole pecan pie there, I enjoyed it. But when we know that and we understand that, we can walk before God 
in this situation and we can, we can cut Satan off. We can stop him in his tracks when we realize that, yes, I prayed for this person's back to be healed, but it wasn't. God, you do still have it in your plan somehow, some way to make all things work together for good. That doesn't mean a singular thing in itself is good, but it's going to work together with other things for good. And we'll just have to see how that goes. Yes, sir. And we have to, we just have to come to that place where we say, Lord, whether you heal me or not, I'm going to trust you. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to trust you. Brother Phil, sometimes I wonder that we don't maybe put a little bit too much emphasis on healing. And I say this carefully, but I mean, I think God's more concerned with our faith than our comfort. And as and as and as we kind of roll back into some of the restudy of the of the Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, we're going to we're going to come to that very place that you're talking about. That we, as an individual, often place too much on the physical man yes, and not near enough on the spiritual. Yes. Yeah. And and uh, this is kind of the. Uh, struggle that I'm going through right now is trying to bring my my spiritual man in line with what I believe and what I know to be true as I struggle with all the things that have come against me in the last years. Now, let's go down to verse number 27, same, same chapter, 1 Corinthians 12, go down to verse 27. And again, I have a whole grouping of scripture that I'm using as we get to the point of healing in this text. 1 Corinthians 12, beginning in verse 27. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. So now we see that it is God that has designed the leadership structure within the church. And we obviously understand the, the role of prophets, of apostles, prophets, and teachers. But as soon as he points out these three leadership positions in the church, he talks about that after that, it's miracles, gifts of healings. And these leaders, these leaders have their role to play in the government of the church. You know, sometimes have you ever read the scripture that says, where there is no vision, the people perish? One of the things that God places in a pastor's heart, as I was looking at this, uh, I had to say, well, I'm not an apostle. I don't claim to be an apostle. But when I look at the prophets and teachers, there's a factor of the prophet, and there's a factor of the teacher that is what makes up a pastor. And so, I understand that in the role of leading the church, I must have a vision. It was mentioned to me, uh, uh, and, and, I, and I, in the conversation, I was involved in this conversation, that uh, the worship and praise service on Sunday morning was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was pointed out to me that Maybe it was so joyous and so uplifting was because that's how the leader, pastor, was responding to the worship on Sunday morning, more than normal. And therefore the church was being led by the person that God decided to be their leader, and not just in the teaching and the preaching, but in the worship and in the praise and the adoration of the Lord. 
I, I just thought I was going to pass out Sunday morning. I just thought I was going to pass out. With joy. Yeah. I just had a freedom that I haven't felt in a long time. Whatever. I, I think that along with you, we come in and we come in with the attitude of praise. And then when the song service gets going, we, we're expecting it. I mean, the last few weeks. We have come with anticipation. Amen. And when that happens, then it's just easier for God to move. Now, I don't want to scare anybody off, but in case you didn't know it, revival has broke out in the world. <laughs> now, we're not having extended meetings, but we are in revival. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm not going to say that from the pulpit on Sunday, but I'm going to let these, these classes know. I'm a little more intimate with the classes. We're in revival. Yeah. And I don't know if anybody else is getting revival, but I am. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm going to enjoy that. So God, God puts these these positions of leadership to take us into the vision that God has. See, when I have a vision for El Grove, it's because I've asked God, "What's your vision?" And I'm I'm trying to make make my vision and my my goals and my, everything that I'm doing match God's vision for this church. And God wants us to see that right here in the Scripture that. That miracles and gifts of healing. See, God points out healing individually here, but He puts all the other miracles just in the lump together. There is an importance to healing. Maybe some of our healings have not come simply because. We're kind of over there on the path that Jerry was sharing with us earlier about, well, if I get healed of this, then how am I going to do life? How am I going to blah, blah, blah? And Jerry mentioned, you know, well, if I get healed and, and, and I, I'm no longer able to receive my disability, uh, what, what, what am I going to do? And I'm not saying that's probably the deepest level that anybody would have, but maybe, maybe sometimes, um, oh, how... I don't know how to say this without sounding so critical, but I've honestly ministered to some people, a few people, that they wanted to be sick. Yes. They wanted to have the attention. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have, and, and, and not a lot, and just, just, but, but you know, what if there's a little element of that in a lot of us? Maybe we need to dig a little deeper into our own emotions and to our own doctrines. You know, each of us has our own doctrine, our, our own individual religion. We're, uh, we, we might be a part of a bigger group, but it, 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 and I don't think there's any two of us alike. I just don't think there's any two of us alike. So maybe we need to look, look a little bit deeper and find out, if, like, like uh, Scott was saying, that maybe we're getting in the way of the healing. And the fact that God puts this importance on healing, and let's go on just a little bit farther. Verse 29 and, and 30, 31. Are all prophets? It's a question. Are all apostles? Are all teachers? And then it goes on. Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gift of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? And then he closes it up by saying, but covet earnestly the best gifts. Plural. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. And then he goes on, you know, in chapter 13 of Corinthians to teach us about love. Mm -hmm. And we, we serve God. I serve God because I love Him. When I realized that He loved me when I was totally unlovable, when God saved me, I did not love Bill Sanders at all. I didn't even trust Bill Sanders. Because Bill Sanders would do things and say things that I can't tell you where it came from. I honestly think sometimes an evil spirit was just speaking through my lips. I was harsh. I was hard. But I found the love of God to be more valuable to me than anything else in the world. It was through the love of God that I discovered 
I can have a relationship with God Himself. You saw everything and found that great big pearl. Yes. The pearl of great price was there. And, and then I found out that God loved me so much He would help me become the person that I wanted to be. And then He taught me who I wanted to be. <laughs> he showed me. The Holy Ghost showed me who I really wanted to be. And that, that relationship of love we, we come into this relationship with God as an act of our free will. We don't have to love God. We get to love God. We don't have to serve God. We get to serve God. I don't have to preach. I get to preach. I don't have to teach. I get to teach. I, get, I have the privilege of representing my Father to the world. And he said, so that you can do a better bill, I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. And he's not just going to be somebody that lives in the same town you live in. He's going to dwell in you. He is my constant companion. My present help <laughs> in a time of need. I believe that as God puts these gifts of healing before us, God is wanting us to refocus from the physical. We don't focus on healing when we're well. We only focus on healing when we're sick, diseased, or infirm. And I believe that God has placed this importance on healing for us to realize that we need to, we need to get the obstacles out of the way to who you really are and what you really are going to do for my kingdom as my child, as my, as my heir and joint heir with my son Jesus Christ. See, this gets exciting when you really get down to it. Healing is actually a part of God's plan to help us overcome sin. To overcome the flesh. All through these years, the last few years, I have realized for the first time in my life how truly weak and frail and fallible I am. As a younger man, I would boast about wanting to live to be 110 years old. <laughs> and be in the pulpit when I'm 110 years old. You see, I didn't recognize the frailty of my humanity. But God is showing us that in our weakness, He can be made strong. If we just move ourselves away from that, focus on this body. And say, well, Brother Bill, how can we not focus on what? I don't know. I'm just telling you what I'm learning. I hopefully we're learning this together. I think sometimes Satan uses our lack of being healed from whatever ailment we have as a, sort of a weapon against us. If you were stronger in faith, you wouldn't be doing this. Exactly. Even Paul said, you know, yeah. Paul could be able to perform in his flesh three times. Yeah. So I mean, and I, I, I don't think it's a sometimes thing. It's always all Paul. It's not the contracts. It's what our goal is. It distracts us. Uh, yeah. Our goal is spiritual. It's not physical. And, and, and I want to say this. Sometimes we get discouraged. Yeah. Yeah. And if our discouragement lasts long enough, uh -huh. we get depressed. Mm -hmm. And these are words that we use in our everyday language that we understand. You know, we study these things, we understand these things, we pray over these things all the time. I believe that God can heal depression. I believe He can heal discouragement. 
I believe God can heal it all. And I go back to what Scott said. I just need to keep myself out of the way and stay in tune with God. And here's the beauty of it. If there is something in your life that's in the way, the Holy Ghost wants to reveal it to you. And in the very beginning of this study, it's one of my first scriptures that I've listed that's not about healing, but it is. It says, you have not because you ask not. To encourage yourself, keep asking for God to show you any barrier, any obstacle, any, any speed bump, whether it be an attitude, whether it be an experience, whether, even a memory. Someone came up to me and asked me a question. It was one of Christie's friends when we were in Colorado this last time. And I knew that I had experience to tell them about this and answer this question, but I couldn't remember. I just couldn't remember. You know, I've used illustrations in my sermons for since day one. And most of my illustrations, or the majority of my illustrations here, were something that, that I experienced in my own life. Or at least the way I interpreted it. And I couldn't remember it. And so I was sitting there contemplating, trying to figure out, I, I was wanting to answer this question, but I couldn't remember. And then I just asked, I said, Lord, am I even supposed to remember? That's what I was just going to say. Or are you supposed to and the, and, and the Holy Spirit just just gently as to be. Not today. Yeah. And so I, I shared with them, you know, you know re really, I, there must be somebody else that you're supposed to talk to about this because I cannot answer your question. Mm -hmm. and, but I felt that same peace. You know, <laughs> I experienced that peace knowing that, okay, maybe the memory's gone, but so what? If I ever need it, the Holy Spirit knows what it's like. Maybe it's one that I have, I don't need to tell anymore. I don't need to remember it. Maybe, maybe not remembering this is a part of my healing process. Mm -hmm. Amen? Okay. So earnestly, covet, notice that word, covet earnestly. That's not wishing. <laughs> That's wanting at a high level. I want the best gifts that God has to operate through my life to bless my family, my friends, my acquaintances, and to be instant in season and out of season when time and opportunity comes for me to represent Jesus to the lost and dying world around us. Amen. Sounds like revival to me, folks. Amen. Sounds like revival to me. Well, now let's jump down into Hebrews chapter 12. Go from 1 Corinthians 12 to Hebrews chapter 12. And this will kind of go along with what we've been talking about already tonight, what I was sharing with you. Hebrews 12, let's begin in verse 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Now, Paul is quite clearly telling us here that he wants us to uh, make a path for ourselves. He wants us to expect and he wants us to plan for healing. He said make the path straight. You make the path straight. It's not up to somebody else. So my example to myself is somebody did something that hurt me. 
and I will avoid them. I've had people say, well, I'll forgive that person, but I won't ever trust them again. Uh huh. That's a crooked path. That means when you come toward that person, you're going to divert around that person. God says He wants you to have a straight path. A straight path. God says to expect healing. Isn't that the way? It's, isn't that the way it comes across to you? It says make this. Make, make straight paths, plural, for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. Do you realize that the Hebrew people had a way of treating one another? When a person was lame or infirm, they were pushed to the sides. The lepers were pushed completely out of the community. The lame people were just left laying around begging. They didn't have a social program to take care of them. Begging was the only way for these people to make it. Because society, they'd been turned out of the way. But he says in that same verse, but let it rather be healed. Let your lameness be healed. Let it be healed. Allow it to be healed. You see, healing is to be viewed as the alternative to public rejection that happens because of sickness and disease and infirmity. We all have feeble times physically. And for those of us that are watching the latter what, what, what do they call it? It's the, 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 the fall or the autumn of life. They, they refer to it in music and in books and things like that. Well, uh, I have been told so many times that this and this and this is going to happen to me just because of my age. Get ready for it. It's going to happen. <laughs> well, okay. But I find that. I'm not going to believe that just because this number of years and days have picked off in my life that I have to be bent over and crooked and walk with a cane. There we go. I like that song, one day at a time. Yes. Amen. But we do know, we do understand that if we're not careful, we will use up our bodies prematurely. Yes. And as I go back and I look at, you know, my, my younger days and the way that I attack things, uh, the, one of the things that I never, never, never really looked into was rest. I was full-time pastor of the church, senior pastor of the church, ran my own plumbing company, and build my own house at the same time. And for a part of that was building the very structure that we're setting in tonight. I burned the candle at both ends. I didn't look at rest at all. Maybe, maybe there's going to be some repercussion from that. To fortify that in understanding, my, my current thinking and my current understanding is uh, if I place myself in a position where I get X number of hours of sleep, I have a better day the next day. Mm -hmm. I'm learning to work. So I'm trying to discipline myself and make my path straight by actually planning more time. Now, uh, any any questions or thoughts or anything you want to add to, to, to that portion of scripture that we looked at right there? Anything that maybe I started to say and didn't finish? And, you have a question about The verse before, Brother Bill, uh, let no chastening for the present seems joyous but grievous. Uh -huh. It almost sounds like he's making a little bit of a connection. Paul's making a little connection between uh, our infirmaries as a as a, a chastening. You know, some sometimes the, the the theory is out there 
that uh, that God made you sick or God put this disease on you. Now, I want to remind you that we're not going to get into it tonight, but it's, it's a part of what we're going to go back and look at. We teach and we understand, I understand, that all sickness, disease, and infirmity is authored through Satan. Yes. All of us. I know the scripture says that God will not place anything on you that's more than you're able to bear. But I believe that I don't believe that God is going to punish me. And that's what sin, I mean sickness, disease, and infirmity can be interpreted as. Because my Savior took my sin to the cross. Yes. And He paid the price. And by His stripes you are Now, I guess I'm not thinking that God is punishing us with illness and sin, but, but he, it does talk about the, re, the refining fire of life and th certain references in the book where, where our troubles do have an end result of something better, like, like the, all things work together for the good. Exactly. And, right. and, I, and I think it fits into that scenario very well if we realize that, uh, all right, let's say, for instance, Satan attacks Ron Fisher and attacks him in his back. And we pray for Ron Fisher for his back to be healed, and he wasn't healed, he had to go through a different kind of healing. But the very fact that Ron is sitting in the room tonight tells us that at some level, Ron Fisher has been healed. Yes. But at some point, Ron Fisher's healing, how many people has that helped? Him going through surgery, oh, how many people has that helped down the road? Right. I got a call Sunday from a guy I want to know about. Yes. Yeah. Because you now have a testimony of God's keeping power, God's healing power, and God's ability to help you endure. But see, God did heal me because after that last surgery, I was told to get back in line the best I could. And according to Kathy's brother, I get around better than any handicapped person you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. And, 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 and that is the healing. The point is, is that let's assume for this conversation that what came against Ron Fisher was from Satan, no, not yeah, from God. Not, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't ma match the character of God. It doesn't affect, it, do, it, it, it just doesn't match with God. It doesn't, but Ron was attacked in a battle and Ron made it through the battle. But now, now, God can take that and turn it for good. Yes. Like He is helping these other people. And like He's in such an encouragement to us. Uh, I, I didn't start calling Ron Rabbi Fisher until after he had been through this ordeal. Because there was so much, a rabbi is a teacher. And Ron has taught us so much about patience and mercy, yes. and yes. grace, and endurance. Long-suffering. Long-suffering. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and Ron can tell you, every Sunday morning, hello, Rabbi, that's what I, that's how I, uh, 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 but that's my salutation to Ron, and it will be. Now, uh, our infirmities can be, therefore, turned into something else. Yes. And that's what Paul is talking about. Because it, it does become, it, it, it takes what the enemy, ended, uh, the enemy intended for evil and turns it for good. That's just what Joseph was That's right. That's right. That's right. Look how many musicians and painters and stuff that have lost either vision or parts of their hand and do such a great job. And, and, and I want you to know that the the, the very humanity. We, we've had a debate going on in the world for a long time about whether or not we were created or whether we crawl out of a slime pit. <laughs> but take, take, take some of these musicians and these artists that you just referred to. They're not all serving God. 
but the results in their lives are showing some of the attributes of God. Therefore, I say, oh, man was created in the likeness and the image of God. Here's some, some proof of it. How such good things and such good victories are coming through these people that don't even believe in God. Verbally, anyway. Yeah. So, while we're running short of time here tonight, anybody know what time it actually is? 6.59. 6.50, we have one minute. <laughs> Bill Sanders can't do anything in a minute except fall asleep. So I guess we better close up shop.